Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. I want to talk to you about common table expressions, CTEs. Um, useful, handy, very, very nice set of uh, functionality. But um, there can be some confusion around it. Um, people tend to think of them either as um, completely divorced from, from any of the standard rules so that you know you can do a, a, a CTE, say a recursive CTE, and you know, oh, it will never hit TempDB, or um, they think that you know, well, a CTE is just exactly the same thing as a temp table or a table or a, a table variable because of the T in the CTE, common table expression. When in fact, you got to remember that it's common table expression. It's an expression first, a table, and common second. So, with that in mind. I want to show you an execution plan for a recursive CTE so we get some idea of what's going on there. You can see, you know, something different. Um, let's check it out. All right, so we're in AdventureWorks 2017, and this is the USB Git Manager Employee Store Procedure. Now we can take a look at the uh, code in that store procedure. Just use SQL prompt to take a look at it. And you can see that this is a CTE and it is a recursive CTE, it joins back to the CTE. So it does this union all inside there and um, references itself uh, to pull information together. So this is a recursive common table expression. Everybody cool with that, great. So if we were to execute this, uh, the results come back and we get those here. And if we were to capture an execution plan, it looks like this. Now, the execution plan, you know, it's got a select statement, um, a sort, compute scalar, the nested loops is pulling from a couple of other tables. But the really interesting part starts here with the table spool. Now, it's an index spool, so it's what's known as a temporary index. Um, it's an index stored into tempdb, um, built temporarily for reuse during the thing. Now, here's what we're going to do. We want to take a look at the node ID. Node ID is four. So what's going on is you got to remember every query instantiates from the left to the right. The logical processing order is the instantiation across going left to right. So this index pool is getting instantiated and then it's going through a concatenation operation. Now a concatenation operation is easy to understand. It's appending multiple input tables to form an output table. In other words, it does each of these things in order. So the first thing it's going to do is the compute scalar nested loops and pull together data. So these are all going to occur. This is executing, and we can see this over here, in row mode. So it's pulling back one row at a time. It's going to get a row. Now it's going to execute these and load these things into the index pool. Then it's going to go down here, and it's got the assert, um, the compute scalars, and another table spool operation. Or not, sorry, not another, a table spool operation. And then the other information pulling together data. Uh, to put everything together. Great. Okay, that makes sense based on the query that we have, but where's this table spool coming from? Now, this one has a node ID of 14, but it has an additional property value we need to take a look at, and that's the primary node ID of 4. Ah, well, we've already seen that number 4 up here, so we now know what's going on. The information is being loaded into the index spool, and then that index spool is being used down here to feed data back into the um, index pool again through the concatenation operation and all the other stuff. So that is how the recursion is occurring. It's putting data into one location and then using that same data elsewhere to do other joins. And so you can see a couple of things. One, that is how recursion is occurring in this case. Two, yes in fact this common table expression is using tempdb because that's where an index pool uh, is going to be placed is on the tempdb. It's a temporary index and all the temporary things get dumped into one place and that's tempdb. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what's going on in a recursive CTE, gives you some idea of what's occurring inside of a CTE, and shows you how to use execution plans to start to walk through your recursive CTEs at home. 
So hopefully that helps explain things that are going on inside of a CTE, especially a recursive CTE. Now, granted, not all CTEs, in America, most other CTEs probably won't come up as spools the same way this thing did. But um, just so you know, it can happen, and uh, you can see it that way. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Rugate Software.